Absolutely. Now let's start moving on to some news. We'll start off with a lighter story. How much coffee is too much coffee? Right off the jump, how much coffee do you drink? I do not drink a ton of coffee. Okay. I'm maybe like a one cup per day kind so am of I. person. But the bigger question here is how much caffeine do you think you consume in the course of a day? If okay. you were going to if you were going to guess, Rebecca, what do you think your daily intake of caffeine is? Whatever is in one cup of coffee. If I drink more than one cup, I'm like a I'm like a poodle. I'm wow. like running around like uh, I, I can't handle really caffeine. It makes That's me impressive. crazy. That's very impressive. So uh, DrugGenius.com found that 28% of New Yorkers' daily fluid intake consists of caffeine or, or alcohol. Think about that. 28% of everything that a person consumes, a New Yorker, is either caffeinated or alcohol. Yikes. The national average is 30%. Um, so it's interesting. Like That is essentially a third. That's a lot. 47% say they have a drink uh, at the end of the day to unwind every day. Uh, and then over 70% of people say coffee is absolutely needed to start their day. Fair enough. I'll, one thing that I, so I went to Ohio University and one of the biggest things that stood out to me in any class I ever, any course I ever took, um, one of my professors, I think it was a sociology course, one of my professors started off the first day and said, how many of you do drugs or take drugs? And of course, nobody, nobody's going to raise aggressive, their hand. That's aggressive. That's aggressive language. And he, then he said, okay, well, how many of you drink coffee? And Caffeine is a drug, so it looks like um, we have a little bit of an addiction situation going on here because um, it's it's a drug, so legitimately. Here is here is uh, in addition to the numbers, they also shared some of the uh, tips to if, to clue you in if you if you are actually addicted to caffeine. If you okay. do have a a caffeine problem, do you get headaches if you don't drink that cup of coffee in the morning? Uh, if that's the case, and I know a lot of folks uh, in my own circles who who fit into that category, that would say yes that to is, that. That yeah. is a that is a yes. Um, it's interesting because I think people will. You have some people who are going to think that they drink a lot of caffeine, even though they drink, say, maybe like one or two cups of coffee very slowly throughout the course of like their entire workday. Sure. Which really, in the grand scheme of things, we're talking about like that's roughly 120 milligrams of caffeine. That's not an ungodly amount, no. right? Um, but there are other folks, raise my hand on this one, um, who drink a Celsius first thing in the morning when I wake up to get the brain working so Josh I can do what really I do. really looks forward to that Celsius. Um, it's a and then big deal. I'll usually have a coffee before I get on the road. Oh, and then sometimes you will see me on this show drinking a Diet Pepsi. And there are more mornings than not that I am on my third caffeinated uh, beverage by 10 a.m. I don't know, Josh. It doesn't sound great. It doesn't. It doesn't sound great at all. But that's obviously that, that is not the only news we're talking about here, right? Yes. Confusion continues over cannabis. Um, what is the state saying, Josh? Okay, so the state says it's illegal to sell cannabis products if you don't have a license. And right now, very few uh, entities or businesses or people have licenses. That said, we've been talking about this issue of gifting marijuana or marijuana sticker shops mm -hmm. for the better part of two weeks. Uh, we've got a legal battle playing out um, where a DA in Yates County is actually prosecuting uh, a group of individuals who were operating these quote unquote marijuana sticker shops. Uh, and now we've seen uh, a new business appearing to sprout up in Auburn in the city on Genesee Street, uh, who is a cannabis marketing firm. Huh. Um, thing is here, as the Auburn Citizen reported over the weekend, if you go to their website, uh, they have other locations throughout the region. Um, they're actually a dispensary. So, and by the way, all of, all of these sort of ongoing issues, including lawmakers being split on whether uh, it, there is a loophole or not, or whether the state's guidance needs to be more strict, uh, with all of that happening, we've also got 
the state issuing guidance for marijuana delivery, cannabis delivery. That came out on Friday. Right. So you've got all of this information. And what we've tried to do on the on fingerlakes1.com is create a little bit of a where do we stand right now? So everything that we know is in the top story on the homepage right now. It's very confusing. And I think um, until the state and we might see action on this in the beginning part of January when the ses- when the legislative session begins in okay. Albany. Um, until the state acts, I think we're going to see these businesses moving forward with their cannabis operations. One, because other people are doing it and they don't want to be left behind in the industry or lose out on market local market share. Sure. Um, but also because there are lawmakers who say that this is a legitimate loophole. This is not a, a fluke thing where people are just saying there's a loophole when there isn't one. So um, we'll see what the what the state does with it. All right. Stay on FingerLakes1.com. Uh, next story that we're taking a look at, a search continues for a missing St. John Fisher student from Clifton Springs. Josh, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, so Ken DeLong, um, we talked about this a little bit, I think on Thursday, Ken DeLong, hasn't been seen or heard from since uh, November 27th. He had a a debit card transaction that showed up on December 3rd. He was last heard from uh, basically on the phone with his father getting onto a train in France. Then after that, nothing. Um, Nobody knows where he is. His abroad study ends uh, December 17th. So basically at the end of this week. Uh, and his visa expires in January. There was a rally or a uh, vigil and rally held over the weekend, a prayer service. Uh, Family's holding out hope that he's okay, that he's going to come home safe, but uh, nobody's heard anything so far. And uh, law enforcement is asking for anyone who has information or may have an idea of where he may be um, to contact either the school or contact law enforcement here, and they're going to be able to relay that that information uh, over the Atlantic. Well, we certainly wish the best to the family.